We've just talked about a variety of risk factors for suicide. It's important though to remember that risk factors are common and in themselves are no more predictive of a suicide than risk factors for heart disease predict heart attacks. They're simply indicators of potential risk. But a percentage of your students with risk factors may start to exhibit what we call warning signs. These are the things that tell us to stop and pay immediate attention because a student may be at risk for engaging in suicidal behavior in the near future. The word facts provides a helpful acrostic for identifying the most commonly recognized warning signs. F stands for feelings hopelessness, worthlessness, despair about the future, or excessive worry. We should be concerned about students who are exhibiting these types of feelings. A denotes actions. Actions include things like trying to get access to a gun or pills, behaving recklessly, or increasing alcohol or drug use. It can also include showing aggressive behavior that's inconsistent with the student's previous demeanor self-harming behaviors or being involved in bullying behaviors. Looking online for ways to die is something new that has been added to this category. C indicates changes. This is a very important category because it means we're looking for changes from the student's previous attitude, moods, or behaviors which have been noticeable for at least a couple of weeks. For example, students who are active may become withdrawn Quit athletic teams, stop paying attention to personal appearance, daydream, or even fall asleep in the classroom. It would be impossible to list all of the potential behaviors you might see, so simply concentrating on recognition of changes from previous behaviors is the real key to making assessments in this category. T represents the threats that some students make or hint at. These can be specific statements of intent, like, I'm done with living, or I'm thinking of killing myself, or worrisome innuendos in writing or other class assignments. Threats may also be posted on social media sites. Whether specific or vague, threats tell us the student is thinking about death or suicide, and that is what escalates our level of concern. S refers to situations that may serve as triggers for, the, for suicide. These include getting into trouble at home, in school, or with legal authorities, personal losses in relationships, opportunities, or even losses of less tangible things like self-esteem or hopes for the future. Life changes for which students feel overwhelmed or unprepared, such as moving or the transition after high school graduation, can also serve as triggers. The most worrisome time is between the occurrence of the triggering situation and its resolution. In that period of uncertainty, before the outcome is known. So what do you do if you observe several of these warning signs in one of your students? First of all, you don't have to be certain that suicide is part of the problem at all. If you notice warning signs, you want to respond. Treat your concerns the same way you would deal with concerns about any student. What's got your attention are the changes in the student's academic engagement. Focus on the specific things you've observed and not try to figure out what's causing them. And remember, while students can disagree with your feelings about them, they can't disagree when you give them specific and observable examples as the reasons for your worries. Organize your concerns so you can talk with the student about them in a structured way. Follow this up with a warm handoff to your designated resource staff. What's a warm handoff? We'll tell you in a couple of minutes.